What's up guys? Welcome to the Chess Giant. This is Solomon Ardell and in today's video we're going to be covering an animal gambit for black against the move of d4 which most players have probably never heard of before. In fact a week ago I couldn't tell you what it was either and that is the cormorant gambit. Okay it starts out with the move of c5 with all but no need defense in which case after capturing we don't go with the usual e6 but instead we play the move of b6 and again i didn't know what this was but i went on my patreon exclusive discord chat and my guy brendan big shout out to you brother mentioned this opening and you know at first sight when i was looking at it, i was going gosh this seems really weird but okay at the end of the day it is an animal opening it's been a while since i've done one of these and a patreon wants it to happen let's get this video out but the more that i looked at this gambit the more playable I realized it was, right? I'm actually a fan of it. It's a lot of fun for black. You get an edge development, you know, attacking rays, diagonals, files, and you're really gonna put a lot of pressure on white here if they accept the gambit. And that's what the majority of this video is gonna be about, what to do if white takes on B6. But first off, let's answer the question, what if they don't, right? I mean, okay, if white wants to play something like knight F3 or E4 or something, we're just gonna take back right? Even material, white's not going to have a D pawn. We're not going to have a B pawn. And that's a great trade for us, right? We're going to be out manning white in the center with our E and D pawns and black there with a playable game. What happens if white tries to defend the pawn with a move like B4? Well, I'm not really a fan of this move for white because we can just take back and guess what? White has the same exact issue, but now they have double isolated pawns, right? So the idea of B4 can't even happen in the future. And there's a lot of different moves that we can play here. I know engines like moves like knight f6, bishop b7, e5 is a really solid choice attacking that pawn. And at the end of the day, I mean, even if you wanted to take this pawn right now, I personally probably wouldn't play this, but if you want to win this pawn right away, just throw in a check, take on c5, a playable game for black, right? We're chilling. So, you know, at this point, uh, we're going to continue with Fianchetto and our bishop on b7, really activating it. And uh, yeah, just trying to go on to play some funky and fun middle game chess. Going back to that move of b6, what about the move of bishop e3 defending the pawn? I actually find that this move is a lot more sound, but I still like it a lot for black from a practical standpoint. Because we're going to take, right? And if you don't take back, I don't I don't know why you played that, right? So you got to take back. And here we're going to play a move like knight c6, right? Just develop our knight. And here's the deal, guys. A huge idea in the Cormorant Gambit is to actually fianchetto our dark squared bishop whenever we can. Okay, now we're going to get into the subtleties of this and when not to, specifically if we see a pawn on e4. All that being said, at this point in the game, we have given up our b pawn, right? So the b8 file is going to be open, right? Very nice file for a rook and or a queen to go on. Why not throw a bishop into the mix and really make white feel the heat on the queen side of the board? Now, if you plug this position into Lee Chess and you look at the most popular moves for white, we have knight f3 and then e3, right? Both of these moves seem pretty solid, but guess what? Black is now crushing after queen a5. Black is simply winning this game, right? We're attacking the bishop, and if you run away with the bishop to somewhere like a3, guess what? We're double attacking on c3 as well, right? If white here tries to defend both with something like bishop d4, which is really the only attempt, we now play e5 and this bishop is simply trapped. The best thing that white can do is sack a piece. And now we're up a piece for two pawns. We're up in development. I'm taking black here any day of the week. So going back to that move b6, you can try to defend the pawn, but at the end of the day, I think that gives black a really fun game. What about taking on b6? Well, in this case, we're going to capture back with the queen, immediately putting pressure on both b2 and f2 right and uh, okay i mean let's say white plays something here like knight c3 we're going to play knight f6 white should play the move of e4 right according to the engines but this move of knight f3 is very popular uh, in online chess so i thought we'd cover this first what do we do against this well in this case again we're going to play bishop b7 right very easy square notice the pressure that white is under right i mean if you look at this from the white perspective it may seem a little bit uncomfortable right you're up a pawn but you can't move the bishop without losing the pawn on b2 right and uh, okay let's say white here plays a move like e3 in that case we're going to play g6 and again fee and shadow that dark squared bishop make a you know a quick castle at the king side of the board and now we have a couple of moves that we see a lot uh b3 and rook b1 at the time of making this video have both been played 42 times uh, from white and online chess so there's a tie there uh, first off what about the move of rook b1 well in this case rook c8 the computer recommendation i really like this idea i mean just putting the pressure on white right away right and white's got to you know make something happen here they got to play a move like knight a4 they got to defend the knight with bishop d2 or queen e1 because guess what if they just make a move here let's say they play something like h3 we're taking this knight off the board and saying thank you for the rook we simply just want a piece and we're up a piece for a pawn 
black yet again is crushing. So y'all going back to this move of castle and king's side, if you see something like rook b1, rook c8, you have a really fun game ahead of you. What about the move of b3 here, right? White here, you know, just trying to fee and shadow their bishop quietly. We now have this idea of knight g4, okay? This is a really fun move here. We're pinning the knight on c3. It actually turns out that bishop d2 is the computer recommendation. And if you do see that, we have queen c6 and black really does have a fun game there, you know, double attacking the knight. Uh, if this knight moves anywhere besides h4 or e1, we're simply going to have a mate in one there on g2 because we have a battery ram on the a8 to the h1 diagonal. And here, if you play a move like bishop b2, which is, you know, very common, we now have a sack on e3, right? Sack on e3, take with check, wipe out that knight. And yet again, black here, is up in material, right? So all that being said, that move of uh, knight f6, if we see something quiet here, like knight f3 and e3, we really want to shift our focus to putting pressure on the queen side of the board, right? But what about the move here of e4? Well, in this case, I actually recommend playing bishop b7 very quickly, okay? Put pressure on this pawn. And here we're actually going to see a lot of Owen's defense ideas, but with a lot more space. Okay, we're putting pressure on this pawn. If you see something like e5, knight e4 can be played. If bishop d3, we can now play e6. Notice here that e5 no longer works because of bishop takes on g2, trapping the rook. And here, if something like knight f3, we play bishop b4. Very active chess, pinning this knight to the king on e1, which by the way is a key defender for the pawn, which already has two attacking pieces on it. We're going to be covering what to do if white just castles and gets the heck out of there. But what happens here if white plays a move like queen e2, right? What if they're really trying to hold on to their pawn? Well, in this case, I'm a big fan of knight a6. Okay, we're trying to bring our knight to c5. By the way, if you want to take this knight, this is disastrous for white because we're going to capture back, kick this queen up, bishop c5, and gosh, I mean, in a lot of ways, this reminds me of a reverse scotch gambit, uh, just in the sense that we got two bishops and a queen locked and loaded. We're attacking the queen there. If the queen drops, I mean, knight g4 continuing to add the pressure. Rook f1 doesn't really work because we would just take it off the board. And if here white tries to continue holding on, we have d5 and castling queenside. Sure, we're down two points of material, but black here is simply crushing, right? I mean, look at the activity of white's pieces. They only have two pieces that are not on the first rank, right? We have one, two, three, four, and a rook staring right at the queen. We're going to be looking to play rook takes d5 and also put pressure on this knight. This game's just not going to be lasting very long, right? So going back against knight a6, white cannot take this knight. They instead should play a move such as bishop e3. In that case, okay, we can play knight c5. And at this point, you know, if we ever drop this queen back, this knight is going to be free to roam to take this pawn on e4. We're already putting a ton of pressure on that centralized pawn. We're pinning the knight on c3 and if white ever wants to take that knight off right now okay we just take we take their knight out on c3 take on c5 ton of pressure here i mean and that's really the idea of the cormorant gambit right we're going down a pawn but we're putting so much pressure on white that they kind of got to make their position a little bit awkward or damage their pawn structure which we're going to continue going after in this case notice how hard it is for white to hold on to the extra pawn right if you play queen d2 uh oh e2 is not as well defended right we're simply going to capture off what about the move of king d2? Well, in this case, we have rook c8 continuing to add the pressure. If c4, white does hold on to their pawn, but we now play e5. And this, this is a really bad bishop, guys. I mean, I know we talk about, you know, I've mentioned bad bishops on this channel a lot, the French bishop, all that kind of stuff. But y'all, this bishop can't even move. I mean, this is bad. This is really bad. Okay. And in a lot of ways, the queen is having a hard time moving too, because if you move this queen anywhere, Besides e3, we can take this pawn off. If you do move it to e3, we take the queen and then win the pawn on e4. I mean, there's just there's just so much going on here. Uh, I mean, if you plug it in, it's going to give you a slight advantage to white, but I would hate playing this position as white. Uh, I mean, black here, very simple chess, right? Rook c8, castling king side, uh, potentially bishop a6 ideas, bishop c6, just improving the position. There's a lot of different things. Uh, that we can do here. And from the white side, I'm just having a hard time seeing how they're going to improve their position in a natural fashion, right? So, okay, going back to that move of bishop b4, right? Uh, you know, putting pressure on that knight. If white here wants to hold on to that pawn, they can. You know, we're going to play knight a6 and knight c5, though, put a ton of pressure on them, and we're going to get some fun attacking chess. What about the move of bishop d2, right? Well, I did want to mention this move because here's the thing. Sometimes you may see this idea of white, you know, taking on c3, and then they think they can just capture that knight. By the way, if they take on g7, this is a really bad mistake because we simply have a mate in one. So let's say they see that. They're just going to take this knight, and okay, we're sitting at material, but they think that they can take on g7, right? So they still think they're up a pawn, but we now play rook g8. 
right? The whole idea being if you just move your bishop somewhere, we can take on g2, blasting open this position and really the, the safety of the white king. And if you play bishop d4 attacking our queen, we now play queen a6. I love this idea for black, right? We're continuing to put pressure on g2. We're preventing white's king from castling. And here, if white tries to hold onto their pawn with a move like rook g1 or something, okay, just continue developing, putting the pressure on white. And if g3, sure, g2 is not a weakness anymore, but guess what? It just weakened the knight on f3, which is pinned to the rook. Let's continue to add the pressure here. Queen b7 at battery ram against that knight. And yet again, I mean, this position is simply resignable for the white side. So all that being said, going back to bishop b4, you know, white here can play a move like queen e2 or bishop d2. I'm not really that concerned with either. What about the move of castling kingside? Well, in this case, I recommend just taking the knight and then capturing on e4. And if you plug this in, it's probably going to give you about a plus one advantage for white. I must admit, this is a better position for white than black, especially after the move of bishop a3. White really does need to spot this. It weakens d6, right? Because this is a weak square. We, For the rest of the game, we're not going to have any pawns that can defend that square. And on top of that, it's preventing our king from castling. All that being said... I mean, if this is, you know, one of the best, if not the best line that white can show against the Cormoran Gambit with all that we just covered, I'll take my chances, right? Here we can play a move like knight c6, just develop. If you want to attack my queen, that's fine. We can play queen a5, putting pressure on your bishop and your pawn as well. Um, and okay, I mean, we have a funky middle game position, right? Again, white is better here, but there's not really a clear way a clear road to victory, right? In fact, white can't just take on e4 and then, you know, pretend like they can play queen d6 because guess what? The knight would be able to attack that square, right? Um, there's just a lot of things that can happen here, a lot of ways that, that black can really, you know, make this a, an interesting and dynamic position, and we're just playing chess. So all that being said, guys, going back to the first move, d4, right? Um, you know, this gambit is all about playing c5, playing b6, and sure, we do get an advantage in development, but at the end of the day, we're only up one move here, right? We have one piece developed, they have zero. I would say the biggest advantage is that our development is gonna come more naturally, right? Because we have pawns off the board, very quick moves like bishop b7. And on top of that, we have opened up to two attacking files to put our rooks, right? And also three attacking diagonals, right? We're gonna put a ton of pressure on white and oftentimes they're gonna have to kind of develop a little bit awkwardly and we're gonna look to take advantage of that. I hope you enjoyed this one. Let me know what you thought of it down in the comment section below. Hey guys, wanted to give a big shout out to my Patreon supporters for the month of February in 2023. Appreciate you guys a ton. And if you haven't checked out the Patreon before, make sure to go check it out. There's a lot of Patreon exclusive benefits that you can gain. And I'd love to have you join the crew. Hey.